Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks very much for joining me again for another video. This is a Friday Sews video, so as always, a huge thank you to Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room for setting up this fabulous hashtag. So thank you all very much for coming back. If you're a regular viewer or regular subscriber, if you're new to my channel, you're very, very welcome. Um, first off, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody who watched my video that I published last week, which is all about my 5K subscriber Q&A. I had so much fun making that video and I got some really good feedback on it. So thank you to everybody who watched and commented. I really, really did enjoy answering all your lovely questions. So thank you very, very much as always. So I think I haven't done a Friday Sews for about two weeks, I think. So I do have quite a bit of stuff to catch you up on. So what I've been sewing, um, a few bits and pieces that I've purchased and my plans for the upcoming weeks. So without further ado, I shall get started. I have my notebook here, so don't forget. And I switched chairs and I think it's a bit squeaky. Apologise. Uh, so first off, I'll start with what I'm wearing. And this is a Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt uh, from her book Stretch, I think. And I made in this fabulous um, stained glass window cotton jersey from Ecobee. It's just really, really fun fabric. I love wearing it during the summer. So it's got all different um, rainbows and apple trees and kites. It's really, really fun fabric. Love it. So yeah, I love this t-shirt. It's a really, really great pattern. So what have I been doing in the past two weeks? So first of all, do you have a mending pile like I do? So I have a little mending pile of things that, you know, should be fixed, little rips, buttons, hems, that kind of thing. And it gets ignored. It gets put in the corner and ignored. Even if I'm pottering around here saying, oh, what'll I do? I look over the mending and then just blank it out because that's not fun. Let's be honest. However, I have pajamas that I made a long, long time ago. So they're actually from the pattern, um, sew over pattern, the ultimate pajamas. So I had a little bit of this fabric left over. So it's lovely lobster cotton that I bought so long ago, I couldn't even tell you where. This is probably one of the first patterns I made. Actually, it's a great beginner pattern, the ultimate pajamas, really, really great pattern. And the back basically fell apart. So I managed to find a bit of fabric. Oh, it's not even coming out on camera. They Barely, barely, there you go, so you can just see the colour difference. So I was able to patch up the back and yes, delighted. These have been in the mending pile, I want to say six months. So I finally got those done and I was delighted that I don't have to look at them anymore. So that was the first thing I got done in the past few weeks, which I'm so happy to see the back of. Fabulous. But this is a really, really great pattern. I would recommend it. The next bit of fixing I did. So you might remember that I made the Adam Sews hipster pouch a few weeks ago. This was this was a journey. So initially I was like, oh, there's an awful lot of binding on it. How am I going to do the binding? And then I kind of got used to it and now I'm loving it. So initially it was a huge shock to the system because the whole of the inside is bound and I made an absolute hash of it. I did such a bad job on the binding in the inside. It annoyed me every single time I opened the bag. So I unpicked the whole thing and I redid the binding. So I initially had done the binding in this green linen fabric and I think it was just fraying too much. So I'll blame the fabric, not my dodgy sewing. So I then just bought this green bias binding and I redid all the binding in the inside and now I'm so much happier. So really pleased I finally got that done. Hot off the success of this, yes, I did decide to make another Adam Sews hipster pouch. This time I made myself a little makeup bag. And this is it. And I absolutely love how this came out. So the fabric is from um, Apple Green, Apple Tree Crafts and this beautiful star fabric. And then I did the quilting, the top stitching in gold, gold um, thread, which came out really, really well. It's got a nice little uh, zip that I just had that colour in my stash actually, but actually goes really, really well. It's got the lovely foam in it to give it a bit of stability. And then the inside then is all bound as well. And I am so happy with it. I use it for my makeup, so apologies if you can see a bit of blusher inside it. So, and I love with the binding on the stripes, it makes it go kind of a, almost like a candy cane. I love it, absolutely love it. So I didn't put the front pocket on this, so it's just quilted on both sides. And I didn't put the tabs or the strap or anything. It's purely a little pouch and I'm just delighted how this came out. Hot off the success of that. <laughs> and because when I saw my sister very recently, she admired my blueberry pouch and it was her birthday. So I made my sister one too. And so it's since been gifted and she loves it. So I'll pop in a few pictures here of the one that I made her. So the fabric was from Quilt Yarn Stitch and all the hardware was from Quilt, Quilt Yarn Stitch as well. So the zips, the lobster clasps, the D-rings, the sliders, 
everything. Oh, even the foam stuff that came inside, all from Quilt Yarn Stitch. Fabulous bag, bag supply uh, website, really, really good. I'll link it below. So I made that for my sister and I did make her the actual uh, crossbody version and it's really, really cute. And the binding is from an Aldi fat quarter. It's actually Peter Rabbit fabric, but it's green and pink stripes and made um, on the bias. The, the stripes come out really, really nice. So I'm very, very happy with that one. Can you tell that I've just gone down a bias binding rabbit hole now? I think I'm trying to put it on everything, as you will see with some of my other makes. Uh, so that was my hipster pouches. I'll probably give that pattern a little break now because I've made three in very, very quick succession. Um, the next thing I did was, um, yes, I did my Librea t-shirt. So I mentioned this in my last Friday Sews, put in a hanger actually. Uh, so I bought this beautiful fabric when I was down in Kilkenny at um, Threads of Green gorgeous rainbow stripe fabric almost um like a kind of Paul Smith so and I made the La Brea t-shirt so in my yes in my, my Q&A video I was wearing the the La Brea t-shirt as well but that was the knit version and this is the woven version so basically the knit version has binding all the way along here and binds the um the sleeves but the woven version just has binding around the neckline and then it has little cuffs here so it's a really really great woven pattern and a knit pattern I should say I got this out of less than a meter and so you can see I did a bit of um, sideways stripes on the sleeves and then of course I did binding on the neckline so I was very very happy with that. This fabric it wasn't the easiest to work with so it was very very tricky it does not hold a press no matter how much convincing you give it it just would not hold so you can see here that's a bit wibbly but um, I persevered I did manage to get my lines straight because it was very very shifty when I was cutting it out I've since changed my rotary blade and wow the difference it makes so I was very very happy with the outcome but it was tricky to sew I'm not going to lie and I'd say because this is quite an easy straightforward pattern I got away with it but any more complicated pattern it would have just been very very tricky so I put on a little label I French all the seams because I did French seam the inside because again it was just such fine fabrics that it's all French seamed on the inside and I absolutely love it I think it's really really cute so this is my Half Moon Atelier Le Brea t-shirt the next thing I got made up so as I, I keep saying, it is not romper weather. Looking outside, it's not romper weather. However, if you also watch my videos, you know I do not like having fabric in my stash. I prefer having it as a garment. So I thought, well, if I sew a summer romper, will the weather get better? So far, no, it hasn't. I don't have those magical powers, unfortunately. But I did decide, look, let's just sew up the romper anyway and see what happens. And I really, really enjoyed sewing it up. So I don't know, will it stay on the hanger? We'll give it a go. So here is the romper. This is the Love Notions Sunday romper that I took a notion when they were having a sale. I looked through all their patterns and I saw this pattern. I thought it looked really, really cute. I've never worn, worn a romper before. Maybe I did when I was a child, but not in recent history. And it's made for knit fabrics. It has two versions. It has a tank version and a dolman sleeve. I did the dolman sleeves. It has beautiful v-necks front and back. Then it has elasticated waist, it has pockets, and then I made the little short version. So I'll try and hold it back for you. So, and I love how it came out. So I do look a little bit like a Victorian man going swimming, but hopefully that's just me. Um, loved, loved making this. So, and I can't get over how my binding at the front, which I did not try to do at all, matches up perfectly, pattern matching. It doesn't at the back at all, but I can't believe the front matches up don't understand it. So then I put in a label saying made by my hands, which is lovely. So it's got the dolman sleeves, it's got the elastic waist, the pockets are a really, really nice construction. So I'll see if I can show you them here. So here's a little angular pocket, great big pockets, really, really nice. And then the shorts at the bottom, see if I can hold back the shorts. So there you go. And I really, really love it. So I, I had to lengthen the rise, I think by about six inches. So I took the finished garment measurements of the rise and it was literally about six inches shorter than what my rise is. So I'm five foot nine and um, so I thought I'd have to add on that much. I ended up then when I was finished it taking out about an inch out of the the crotch length which is now perfect. I also I think I added an inch to the bodice length and I should have actually added more because what I had to do in the end was the bodice was then a little bit too short. I liked it to kind of blouse over a little bit. So instead of folding the casing up, like it says, to insert the elastic here, I actually folded it down to insert the casing. So that bought me a little bit more extra space. But yes, I really, really like it. 
and I'm hoping I get an opportunity to wear it. Even if I don't get an opportunity to wear it outside, I think this would be perfect for when I go swimming with my boys as just a chuck it on, chuck on the swimming tugs, throw this on over it. I think it'd be perfect. And I love the kind of the real summery swimming pool colours. Um, this is beautiful cotton jersey from Ecoby again. So yeah, here's my summer romper. So yes, we'll see does the weather cooperate for romper weather. So that's that. And then the next one, a little bit of a fail, but I'm not finished yet. So I'm not going to call it a complete fail. Um, I went on a little pattern buying um, frenzy this week and I bought this pattern and it is from Waves and Wild and it is called the Cool Time Lunch Bag. And it comes in two views, this bigger one here, which actually has an internal pocket for a water bottle, which is really, really cute. And then this smaller version here, it's got a fold over with Velcro. And I just wanted to basically to give it a go. So I did. So, and here it is. And it might look to you like it's pretty nice. It's nice and sturdy. Aldi fat quarter fabric here. And then you notice, okay, what's happened? So basically, this is actually the inside. So I'll show you what I did wrong. And this is purely because I didn't read the instructions. So this is meant to be the outside. So this is meant to be what it's meant to look like. And you can see I haven't finished it. So this is actually the outside. And then here's my Velcro. This pops in in a kind of a sandwich bag kind of way like, ooh, can I do it like this? And then this folds over, there's your Velcro, and here's my little strap. So a cute little lunch bag, except you're meant to attach the kind of the wadding or the foam or the insulating layer, whatever you have, to the outer layer. I attach it to the lining, which of course means it's way too bulky, way too bulky on the inside. So what I need to do is unpick everything, redo it, except have the foamy bit here, I'll show you what it looks like, this kind of wadding, attach the outer fabric, not the inner fabric. So a little bit of a fail, but I'm not going to give up because I think it's really, really cute and I'm going to persevere and I'm going to redo it and hopefully have a successful outcome with this. But it's a very, very cute pattern. And I would like to try the bigger version with the little elastic inside for water bottle. Very, very cute. So that's my little lunch bag. So, and then the last thing I got sewn up and I've lost it, where did I put it? Here. The last thing I got sewn up this week was the Faustine top. So this is entirely and unashamedly influenced by the lovely Ruan from the Yorkshire Sogra. So thank you, Ruan. Your version is beautiful. And here it is. So what do I do with my hanger? Hang on. So I'll put on a hanger for you to give you an idea of it. So this again is fabric from Threads Green down in Kilkenny. And after making the rainbow top, I was slightly concerned that I'd have the same issues with this, but I didn't. This does hold a press and it's lovely to work with. So it's this beautiful green, pink, black and white kind of spotty fabric. It's got bust starts at the front, nice little uh, very floaty, very breezy top, beautiful. And then drama comes at the back, right? So it's got this beautiful squared lect line. And you can't really see it in this fabric, but it's got this beautiful pleat detail all the way along the back. So I'll pop in um, a picture of the line drawn so you can see it easier. And it's just a really lovely floaty, floaty summer top. Absolutely gorgeous and I love how it came out. So the differences I did was, I lengthened it by an inch. I did the sleeveless version and I do not like facings, so I didn't bias binding on it. So I've been using the continuous bias binding um, method where you basically use a square of fabric and then cut it in half and you, you get a load of bias binding. I think I managed to get about three or four meters. I don't need that much, but it's a very, very great way to create your own bias binding. I shall link it below. So all the, the neckline is all bias, bias bound and all the arms are by, bias bound as well. Now, the tricky bit came is because this is basically a right angle here. So I did a little, little bit of Googling and I'll show you what else I used as well. And I found somewhere that you can do um, binding across a right angle and it ends up with a kind of a mitered corner on the inside. So. I show you, probably can't. So you can just about see a mitered corner on the inside with stray threads. And that's how you do bias binding around a, um, a corner. And it actually worked out quite well. If this was in plainer fabric, I don't think I'd have got away with it, but I think I did with this busy fabric. So, and I just really, really don't like facings. So I just want bound edges and I think it came out really, really well. It's a beautiful, light, breezy, just really, really pretty summer top. Oh, the other thing I did was I um, lowered the neckline by about an inch. I could see by the pictures that the neckline was quite high. So basically um, I drew the line of the smallest size for the neckline and I made a size 40 and the, the fit is absolutely perfect on it. So yeah, here's my Faustine top. Absolutely love it. And yes, this fabric is beautiful. My lovely, my favorite color green. So that was all my sewing this week, or most of my sewing, I should say. 
Um, the next thing I'll show you the other patterns I got. So I also bought um, Mizuzu patterns. I had um, Did they have a sale? Maybe they did. I can't remember why I bought this. I just love it. And it is for a cardigan or a sweatshirt. So it's called the Cuddle Cardigan and it has uh, loads of different views. But it's got this really, really interesting kind of neckline on it. And you can do a version with pockets. And it has a look of the kind of the Marlowe, except it's got all different kind of like colour block options and stuff you can see here. And it's got this really, really nice V detail at the back. I'll pop in proper pictures. But yes, so I bought the Cuddle Cardigan. So with one eye towards autumn. So I thought that was very, very cute. And then this is the latest release from... French navy patterns and it's called the Roscoe sweatshirt and I thought it was really really nice so I have made a half zip sweatshirt Um, I made one earlier in the year the wardrobe by me I think it was called and I just thought this version was lovely it's got the little kind of front yoke and I love this kind of almost kind of nautical version that they, they've styled it and this lovely uh, elastic waistband and again I thought this was just a really really cute pattern so and hopefully you might be able to use up a few bits and pieces of fabric there as well. And it's got a nice front pocket option as well. So this is the Roscoe sweatshirt. And I just thought this was a really, really nice pattern. So that was my pattern purchases this week. Um, what else have I been doing? So I've been playing with my Cricut. So um, my older boy has a couple of birthday parties coming up. So I decided to make a few cards for his buddies. And I shall quickly cover over the names of his buddies. So this is one one uh, card that I made. So and it says happy birthday. And these are the type of cards that you stick on the inside. Except if you do have a Cricut machine, can you spot my mistake? I wonder if you'll spot my mistake. I left on these little things here, which are made for the insert cards and not this type. But I don't think anybody would notice. So I thought this is really, really cute. It's happy birthday and a little cupcake. And then I also got the hang of using the pen. And you can do writing. So again, I'll just cover up the name and you can see here that I was able to use the pen feature to say happy birthday which is really cute so I'm very very happy with those so I'm loving the card maker uh, function on my Cricut Joy the other cards I made and I've already given them away um, my younger boy is moving up a class in creche and I want to say thank you to his lovely minders they do such a good job so I made them two little bags do you think I took pictures before I gifted them no so two little bags out of Aldi Fat Quarters it's the usual little zipper pouch pattern that I use works really really well so I put um card and bits and bobs in for them and so I'll pop in if I did take a picture of the card I'll pop in those I'll be making those this week and then also the last thing I made with my cricket is because he's moving up a room and I know a certain person who might be watching here loves stars so I was thinking of you when I was making this he's moving to the star room so I thought I'd make him this. It's just a ready to wear t-shirt, but I made him a little t-shirt and it says star light, star bright, and it's got little stars on it. So this was using the glitter iron on function on the Cricut. And I think it came out really, really well. I think it's really, really cute. And hopefully he'll wear it now when he starts in his brand new room very, very soon. So very, very cute. Love this. Absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, just just found the um, the star pattern on the Cricut um, app and then just did the writing as well. So I think it came out really, really cute. So adorable. So that was the other thing I got done. Right, are you still with me? So the next things that I want to share with you was, uh, we go to the library most weeks. So I bring my boys down to the local library. It's really, really good and they get huge big bag of books to do them for a week or two. And this time I usually go on my own so I don't have a chance to look at the adult books. But this time my husband came with me and I said, I'm just going to take a quick look to see if they have sewing books. And sure enough, they did. So I was able to take out this, which is a sewing bee techniques book, which is fabulous. It's basically like an encyclopedia, which is where I found how to do the bias binding around corners. It's It's got no patterns or anything. It's literally a how to, how to do absolutely everything. Zips, uh, bindings, uh, finishings, linings, everything, everything. But I also found this one. This is Stuart Hillard and he was on, I think, the first series of The Great British Sewing Bee. And this one is called Bags for Life. I think he's done two or three bag books and I was just really taken by it. You know, my recent bag making journey. So I thought I'd get this one. So love having these bags, these, these bags, these books. So, but it lined up very, very nicely because the lovely Sarah, who super bails um, here on YouTube and on Instagram, I'll link her channel. She's now hosting a new challenge for September and it's called... Hashtag the Sew Safari 2023. And it's basically in September, sew up an animal-y type fabric. It can be any type, it can be a garment, it can be a bag, it can be an accessory, anything you like. It just has to have an animal print on it or have animals on it or be an animal colour, anything you like. And I think it's a fabulous challenge. So I thought back to my peacock fabric, which I bought in Threads of Green as well. 
and it's this lovely border print one so it starts with the peacock feathers and then at the very end then it's this beautiful gold and a green and blue color so i thought this was quite animally maybe not necessarily safari-y but might you get the idea and what i would like to make is this and it is called the essential toiletry bag and it's this beautiful little zipper pouch with this little flap and then you can hang it up and then what it looks like when you roll it out is I can find it there we go so there's your zipper pouch here you've got all these little pockets here and this little flap and i think it's a really really cute idea there is a little bit of kind of clear vinyl here which i've never sewn with and i don't even know where to get it so we'll see how that goes so i think it's really really cute now you can put in all your bits and bobs and then fold it all up and it folds up well you can hang it actually if you're in the bathroom and then it folds up very very neatly to wrap around your little zipper bag I thought it was very very cute so this is now my plan for September this does come with one or two patterns but most of the time you have to um it gives you the dimensions and their squares and you have to cut them out yourself which is fine but I thought that was a very very happy accident that I have the lovely book of patterns and I have the fabric and now I have the challenge to uh, give me the incentive to do it in September which is marvelous so thank you very very much Sarah so I think that's about it um I won't be back uh, to you for a few weeks because we are going on holidays this weekend. Finally, it's been a long, long year. It's been a long, long summer. We are finally going away as a family for a week uh, down to the coast and I'm so looking forward to it. So I won't be getting any sewing done this week whatsoever. But hopefully I'll take a few pictures and share them on my Instagram when we're away. Um, I might take my crochet and see how my husband feels about that in the evening. If I can do some crochet, that would be quite nice. Uh, we've just got a little, uh, a little rental house for the week, which looks really, really nice. So yes, it'll be quiet on here for the next week or so, but maybe hopefully the week after I'll be back with to share what I've been up to. So that is everything I have to show you. It is a bit of a bumper week this week, actually quite long for my Friday sews. But thank you very, very much for joining me. If you do have any questions on anything I spoke about or if you um, have made any of the things that I've made or if you've made any of Stuart Hillard's bags, I'd love to hear um, how you got on with it. But I hope you're all well. I hope we're all having a nice summer. I hope you all have time for some lovely, lovely sewing. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. And I will talk to you all again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.